well, first of all, uh, Esteban is um, a very good driver. I mean, it's, it's I, I'm, I'm stating the obvious, but he's very good at um, having the team all around him, like making progress and taking uh, everything a notch up because he's actually constantly giving feedback on the car, which enables everyone here at the track or at the factory to like improve the car regularly. Um, he's extremely good at finding the, the, the right setting for the car to extract the maximum performance out of it. It's damn fast. You give him a car, he's like usually getting as much as he can from the car. It showed, it showed him, like, uh, it showed it, sorry, consistently, I mean, every single qualification. Um, like I say, if you, if you remove the first four cars that are a bit like always on top of the tables, the rest is more like the driver because the cars are more or less within the same tenth since the beginning of the season and the driver makes a difference and Esteban has shown very often that he's making a big difference he's like um, a top tier uh, driver for sure so just for those reasons he's an asset he's a great driver he's a fast driver he's uh, uh, useful to the team he just doesn't sit in the car and drives it it's like really like extracting the most out of it and lifting up the entire team uh, and as a person he's a great person I mean he's, uh, he's uh, very humble uh, very generous uh, he wants to be uh, involved in the alpine plan at large not just the formula one plan he's a great embodiment uh, personification for our brand he has values that uh, we share and that we would like uh, to be associated with uh, the alpine brand so for that reason he's even more of an asset you mentioned that he wants to be part of the you know the wider alpine brand three-year contract in formula one terms is huge yes do you see him as a, a bit of a team leader going forward? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's already a team leader. I mean, the, the way he's changed since the end of last year uh, is mostly around his leadership. Like the way he's like challenging the team, his own engineers, but also the, the rest of the engineering team and the mechanics and all. Um, he's shown leadership. He's shown the right attitude that makes everyone want to follow him because they realize that he's challenging them for a good reason, because every time he's asking for something, he's giving something as well and lifting up the performance. So he's a leader in this department, and that's also what makes him a good driver, like I said. And then outside of that, he wants to be involved in the Alpine development. He is the first one to offer his services to fine tune uh, the, the road cars that we're going to develop, the uh, wheels and stuff. And you will see, actually, uh, we, we're going to do it. You'll see his input uh, into our future cars, uh, it will translate into uh, some features and not just like stickers on the side. And I guess the stability of that three-year deal is great because you can start to shape the team around him as you build up to becoming a world championship contending team. Yes, absolutely. That, that's exactly right. I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, it's a three-year regulation period that op opens up next year. We wanted that stability around those three years. Like That's why we, I decided to move for a three-year contract. First, because I have, I think, enough guarantees that Esteban will perform at a very uh, uh, high level. And then second, we've seen countless examples of drivers uh, uh, adapt, like taking a t some time to adapt to their uh, team. The risk was if we lose him after two years, to have someone adapt to our team and therefore like slow down our progress. I see this as like a three-year constant progress uh, roadmap and Esteban and the stability of having him around, uh, around here and the team built around him, as you uh, rightfully mentioned, is a big plus for me.